Hey, it's Jim from Janku, and today I want to talk about installing video games designed for Windows on a Linux computer. So I'm over here at the StarCraft website, and I wanted to install StarCraft 2 on my Linux computer. But when I come over here and I go to the Play Free Now option, and I look at the downloads, you can see that it's only available for Windows. And I think there's some Mac options as well, but there's no Linux option here. So I can't install this game directly on my system as it stands currently. Luckily, there's this program over here called Lutris, and this allows us to play Windows games and other types of games on our system. So if I come over here to the download option, you'll see there's a page here about installing it using the AppKit package manager, but it says that I also have to install a different dependency here called Wine. So Wine is a program that allows us to run Windows games on our Linux computer and actually any kind of Windows application or program. So let me go over to this other tab here. So this is the Wine website here. And you'll see that it says that Wine is technically not an emulator. It actually translates Windows API calls into something that can be natively interpreted by Linux. So this has a better performance than something like a virtual machine. And there's some instruction about installing Wine as well. So let's go through and let's install Wine first and then let's go and download Lutris. So I'm gonna open up a terminal here. And I'll expand this. And then I'll just bump up the size a little bit here. So we can see that. And then I'm gonna come back over here to my instructions. I'll scroll down here. And first I'm going to do an add app repository here. So I'm gonna copy this command. And I'm currently using Ubuntu 20.04, so I'll use that first command there. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna paste that in here and press enter. I'll add my password. If I come back here, you'll see that it then asks us to update our package manager. So sudo apt update, I'll just copy that and come back over here, paste that in. That will pull in the latest package that we just added the repository for. And then if we come back here, we can now run the sudo apt install command. And there's a flag here and it's saying we want the stable version. So I'm gonna grab this, copy it. Let me clear my back scroll there and then I'll paste that in there. So we're installing wine hq hyphen stable okay so i'm getting this error here that says the repository is not signed and that's actually because i missed a step here so we actually have to add this repository key now i'm seeing here my system is a 64-bit system so we have to enable the 32-bit architecture so let's first add this dpkg command let me come down here and clear that i'm going to add this and then I'm going to come here and I'm going to grab this wget command to add the key. Okay, the key's been added. Let's do a sudo apt update one more time. So it looks like we were able to get the repository that time. So if we do our back scroll here and we try to install again using the wine hq stable, press enter. This time it's asking us if we want to install it. I'll say Y for yes. Okay, now that Wine is done installing, we can go and install Lutris. So I'm gonna switch back over to my browser and I'm gonna come over here to the download Lutris page. And again, I'm going to add an app repository here. So let's just copy this first line and we'll sudo apt add repository Lutris team forward slash Lutris. Press enter, press enter again. And then we'll have to update our package manager just like last time. So let's copy the second line here. Sudo apt get update, press enter. And then finally, let's run the install command here. So sudo apt get install Lutris and just paste that in and run that. Press Y for yes. Okay, now that Lutris is installed, we can hit our home key here and we can look for the Lutris program. It should pop up like that. And I'll just press enter on that. We get a donate link here, so we should open this in a new tab. So I'm gonna control click on this. Always good to support the open source project so they can keep going. We'll come back to that. And I'm just gonna press okay on this notice. And then we have the program here opened up. And now I'm just going to go back to the Lutris website real quick here. So I'll go back over to Firefox and I'm gonna search for, let me go to this tab here. I'm gonna search for StarCraft up in the search box here and press enter. And then I'm gonna select StarCraft 2, that's the game I wanna play. And then as you scroll down here, you see that there's a Wine version here. So I'm going to click on the install button here 
And then it's already selecting Lutris as the application. So let's use that and say open link. We'll say okay. Here we go. Now we get the install StarCraft 2 option here. Let's press install here. And then it's going to install it to our games folder. That's fine. And let's press install. So you can see it's opening up Wine and it has some other dependencies we have to install. So press install on that. Now I'll choose English and I'll press continue. So the installation is completed, so I can close this now. And you can see the new StarCraft 2 is added here. So if I click on this and I press play, it starts launching the Blizzard application here. So I have to enter my account, which I already have set up. So I'm just gonna add my email, my password. And then I'm gonna say to keep me logged in and press login. And I'll just close out of this notice here. And over here, I'll select StarCraft 2. And I'll press install. I'll use the English version here and look for updates automatically and start the installation process. And now it's a rather large installation process. You can see there's 26 gigs remaining here. But you can start playing the game pretty early on. You don't have to download the whole thing before you can start playing it. So I'll let it get to somewhere in between these two sections here, the playable and the optimal, and then I'll give it a shot and see how it feels. So it looks like we're just about at the playable section of our download here. So in a couple seconds, hopefully it ticks over here and then we'll have an option to actually start up the program and just see what it looks like. All right, there it goes. So it's playable. I'm gonna click play. Now it's launching the game. And I'll just press escape to get out of this. I don't need to watch the intro again. And now we have some options here. So I could go to verses. And I was in the middle of doing a party with, say, Stephanie from our channel. So I'll wait till she signs on and then we can try this game out and see how it goes. So we're going to try co op versus each other. And I'm ready. Just wait for Stephanie to join us. I'm ready. Okay, she's ready. Now, it looks like it wasn't quite downloaded for me, potentially, so it's downloading right now. Now the game's ready, and we're starting in 3, 2, 1. Ooh. It looks like it's for grenades, and it's like beer. <laughs> looks a little disheveled in general. I like the pink glasses. I think his eyes are pink. Oh. It's got pink eyes. He's been playing StarCraft too much. There we go. Okay. All right, so we started up. Oh, and I am not the guy I expected to be, but that's okay. Oh, you're just slow. Yeah, there's a little too much. There's a lot of lag here. Yeah. You say. Oh, there's these little guys. Okay. Nova Stasis Show. So we have main objectives. We have two minutes to do, to purify five security terminals. Hmm. It's a little bit laggy. It's not horrible. I'd say it's passable. But maybe not ideal. Now some of this could be that I'm running video at the same time. So if I close out of all the stuff, maybe it'll be a little better. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll try that. I'm gonna switch over. I'm going to close out of everything, and then we'll see if that makes a difference. 
and I'm going to stop recording and I'll let you know how it is without the recording running. So without the video running in the background, it's significantly better in terms of lag, although there's still a little bit of delay in the frames here. So it's not quite the way that it seemed on a native computer, but that could be because this is an old computer and it doesn't have enough resources to run this smoothly. Now this would be fine for a casual game, but if you're really competitive, like obviously Stephanie and I are, it's hard to build things as fast as you might be able to do that if there wasn't the delay. It's still pretty cool to be able to run these programs natively on my Linux computer. This was something that I didn't think was possible previously, so this is a really cool project. Definitely something I want to support and keep my eye on in the future. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and stay tuned for more content like this in the future. All right, thanks. Take care.